Hello, my name is Sebastian Lake. Um, I'm f originally from France, living in Finland, and I'm here in Rio with two different uh, organizations. One is called Rio Plus 20, so it's an organization to facilitate the participation of young people in the Rio process. And the other one is called an Adopt a Negotiator. It's a blogging project to try to um, keep young people informed and interested about what's happening in Rio. And also what's happening around Rio, like for instance, this World Congress of Mayors um, working for sustainability. Tell us more about Rio Plus 20s. How did this initiative start? And uh, what is aimed to do here in Rio? So Rio Plus 20, the main objective of it is basically to try to facilitate the participation of other young people that are interested in sustainability, but also um, not necessarily particularly aware of what the entry points are or how, to, how they can practically contribute to the conference itself. So that's what we have been trying to do, basically to share information and try to raise awareness about the existence of the conference itself, but also to uh, explain how then to become uh, active, what are the different roles you can play as a young person. So, will you propose any documents in Rio to the negotiator? What type of documents, or what type of content this document will have? So we've been already working uh, basically um, in parallel with the UN time frame. So about nine months ago, we already had a, a youth submission that we took probably three months to prepare. And the idea is to identify what are the main demands of young people in relation to all the major themes of a conference. For instance, you have governance, and we ask for stronger participation of stakeholders and civil society in decision making, and also uh, the establishment of an ombudsperson for future generations. There will be some institutional mechanism to ensure that the interests of future generations are taken into consideration. About the green economy, uh, another major theme of the conference we asked about uh, stronger education for sustainable development because we believe that this is a key solution for sustainability and also like um, stronger work on uh, youth employment in the green economy because we've got a very strong youth unemployment crisis uh, with youth unemployed or, the, or underemployed at the moment and so the role of the green economy in helping address this issue should be also addressed here. So those were some of the key elements we were a lot of others. So in terms of, uh, uh, of the whole process of our negotiation, how do you foresee a better engagement with the young people? Do you see like a seat inside the UN, the UN for a representative of the, of the young people like NGO has? Yeah, so like at the moment, young, um, young people in general civil study has, is considered more, more as observers. So when we have a right to enter into the rooms where discussions are taking place, which is not always already, that's a large issue. But then we are sitting on the back and sometimes we have the right to make a two minute statement at the end. But that's not really an effective way and it also doesn't give us any chance to really support governments in making decisions because then those statements are basically not bringing so much added value to the discussion that already took place. So what would be fantastic would be to really make sure that uh, the different major groups, for instance young people, also trade unions or indigenous people, women, have a right to really sit at the table and be represented directly there and being able to take part to discussions and not just make a small uh, comment at the end. It's interesting, however, because the people are discussing in Rio are actually our representative. Why the UN system, you think, has become so detached from the people? And do you think Rio will be able somehow to reform the governance and also to reform representativeness of the people? To start with the last question, I'm not sure if it will be able to, but it has the capacity. If governments wanted it, if governments wanted to make sure that the decisions they make in the future are more inclusive and more effective also because the two are linked, then they could totally do that. Um, why the UN or governments in general are so detached from the need of the people? I guess one of the issues is the voices that they hear um, at the highest level of decision making. You have very strong lobbies that are uh, organized and this is something that needs to be balanced. Um, like some corporate interest or vested interest have direct access to decision makers and that's why we really need to make sure that other groups like young people or women again um, have the same access. Also I think um, in the UN you have a lot of people that have been working there since decades and so they somehow became framed a little bit by the processes they're working and it's maybe harder for them to see outside of their box and to really look at the problems people have on the ground at the moment. What do you expect will be the outcome of Rio? What do you think out of the zero draft will be approved by the nations? So now it's very difficult to uh, say because just two hours from uh, ago uh, the Brazilians uh, stepped 
in and basically to cover. So before we had a UN-led process, and now because it's becoming, the last final week is becoming more politicized, the Brazilian government is in more facilitating the process, so they might do some stronger changes. Um, we are not le uh, likely to see major um, like groundbreaking outcomes, but at the same time there's a lot of small processes that could be launched in Rio. So for instance, for this um, ombudsperson that I was mentioning to try to represent the interests of future generations, it won't be established in Rio, but what could, or it's quite unlikely, but what could happen is that they really the governments agree to establish a process to really discuss it seriously afterwards. So those are the kind of outcomes you could see to like start discussions on Rio. It should be just a starting point, but this discussion really needs to uh, begin now. The governments and a lot of civil society spend now two years preparing this conference. So <laughs> we need to see concrete outcomes out of that, and I really hope we do see them. We can't wait for Rio plus 40 or something to address those issues. Do you think at least they will be able to reform the governance? Uh, how do you foresee the a reform uh, of uh, the UN govern governance on environment. So it's kind of two different levels. It's like the um, establishment of new institutions or mechanisms, for instance, on which person. But we are not quite sure how much we get, probably later on that. But there is also reforming what already exists. And there's two main institutions within the UN that work with sustainable development. One is the Commission for Sustainable Development. The last meeting they had, they couldn't agree on anything because uh, of a last-minute fight about, between Israel and Palestine, kind of hijacking the whole discussions. Or for all the other thematic issues, they already agreed. So it's quite clear that the Commission doesn't work properly, and it needs to be reformed. And then we also have this UN environmental program. The problem with that is that um, it is not equipped at the moment to really play a major role, being like the main. Um, voice for the environment within the UN system and co coordinating all the work that the UN is doing about the environment. Basically, the UN work but on the environment is fragmented among 500 or a bit more uh, multilateral environmental agreements. So, for instance, you have a convention on climate change, a lot of convention on biological diversities, and they all work side by side, and we don't really have any institution to coordinate that. And I think governments have come now to realize that this is not working and it actually uses more uh, resources than if you will have someone or an institution to really coordinate all this work and be doing more like resource efficient work on the environment. So I'm quite hopeful that we do see some progress because governments are not ready to really innovate so much or put new resources on the table. But at the same time, if you propose them to improve the work that is already being done more or less within the same um, resource constraint, I think that a lot of them are quite interested. We're really hopeful to see that. And this, again, is like one of the discussion that if we don't see an outcome here, I don't see when it, this discussion will be able to move forward. Will, will we need to wait Rio plus 30 or something? I, I don't know, but it's a discussion that is so Im difficult and important that we really need to see something concrete happening here. And I think we all remain hopeful that in the next seven days this is finally addressed. The UNEP was created in 1972, just when the environmental consciousness uh, started. And so I think the context right now is so different that we really need to have an institution that is stronger.